Hi everybody. Well in this video I think this is going to be uh, my last video reviewing this uh, uh, ProLiant ML350 Gen 9 server that I have um, added to my lab. So all the parts that I ordered uh, came in for the upgrades and um, and such so um, let me start with the memory upgrade uh, I ordered an extra 64 gigs of RAM uh, 16 uh, gigabyte memory modules and when I installed them uh, into the uh, into the slots I installed them into slot 2 uh, slot uh, 5, slot uh, 8, and slot 11 initially. Uh, uh, and uh, the 8 gigabyte modules were in slot 1, slot 4, slot 9, and slot 12 so the smaller modules were in the first slots i think the color of them was white and um uh and the bigger modules the 60 gigabyte modules were in in the next available slots which are slot uh which are black i believe uh so uh the server started giving me a memory error uh, I believe it was a memory error 209 or 207 uh, but um, I didn't save the memory uh, error code uh, but um, uh, it said that the memory modules were installed incorrectly and not usable so I switched them around I, I installed the uh, the bigger modules into the first uh, slots and into uh, into pretty much replace the small modules that were already installed and put the big modules in there and uh, put the smaller modules after them uh, as you can see here this is my current configuration and everything is working fine and the 8 and 16 modules, when they weren't working, they were reversed, pretty much. So, uh, I did not get this solution on the internet. Uh, I just thought that maybe the bigger modules should come first and then the smaller modules after that. It appears that it has solved the problem. Uh, where my memory wasn't usable, uh, so... Uh, so if you have the same issue, I would recommend putting the biggest modules you have first, then putting the smaller modules after that. Otherwise, after the memory upgrade, um, the power utilization is 76 watts. Uh, it, was, it was lower when I wasn't running any VMs. I'm currently running a VM on the server. It is, uh, and I've actually allocated 92 gigs of RAM to this VM uh, just just for testing purposes. So, uh, so the server uh, is using nearly all the RAM uh, in in this virtual machine. Uh, so, uh, what else? Uh, storage. I have uh, I've gotten these proper uh, cradles for the drives. Uh, I only needed one, but I, I ordered four just in case I want to add more drives. And it worked just fine. The LED works, and now the controller uh, is not complaining about the drive not being verified. So there it is. Uh, so. Um, it's still degraded because the the battery, uh, the cache battery, is uh, not installed, and it's never going to be installed. Uh, I'm never going to use that, so it's just going to stay uh, that way. Cache module status 
is not there and uh, the power uh, yeah I'm not going to be plugging in the second power supply because I don't feel like <laughs> pretty much paying double the electric bill uh, for this server it, there's no point otherwise uh, everything is the same more or less yeah it's 56 degrees just like it was before um, so uh, let's go check out uh, uh, the SSD uh, I s mentioned that I was gonna benchmark it in the last video so let's go ahead and give it a benchmark this is the model of the SSD right there MK0800 JVYPQ uh, there it is and let's uh, uh, run crystal disk I'll also run Crystal Disk for comparison on my primary um, laptop, which I use day to day. I need to put in the admin creds there. So that one is running inside the server, and this one is going to be running on my laptop. This is an NVMe SSD. So let's compare the two. Like an old uh, uh, serial attached SCSI enterprise grade SSD versus a modern NVMe uh, SSD uh, from Western Digital. Uh, of course. <laughs> There's almost no comparison. The NVMe SSD is twice as fast. By the way, uh, while it's running, actually, I'm going to let it run. It looks like the um, this is in the server is running exactly at the advertised um, speeds uh, within the margin of error. Alright, and um, let me see what model this is. Uh, oh, dash.
Uh, so uh, on my laptop, the one that's running now, uh, we are running on a WDC PC SN530. That's the SSD that's installed and that's running over here right now. So that's what we're comparing it to. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. So and these results aren't bad, but uh, nothing compared to a new NVMe SSD. So that, that's pretty much finished. And this one's also finished, almost finished. Yeah, comparing uh, this old uh, Enterprise uh, serial attached SCSI SSD to this NVMe SSD is, of course, not, not even fair. But the results are just like it's advertised for that particular model of the SSD. So uh, let me just quickly uh, run this. So... Uh, prime for just a minute or so. Blend and should utilize most of the memory. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, it's going to fill up the memory. And while we're at it, uh, I'm gonna give um, uh, I'm gonna give it a quick network test. This is client and uh, this is going to be ten, and I want to run it for one minute. 60 seconds, uh, I think, uh, hmm. ah, there's a folder in a folder, there we go, so, uh, there it is, and I want this. There we go. So, um, network's working great. Uh, originally, originally, I wanted to use this thing. Uh, and it was working, uh, but um, um, this uh, Microtech. 
This is a Microtech uh, HAPAC uh, access point. Uh, well, even though it's an access point, it does everything any Microtech does. It's fully featured. You can do anything you want with it. Uh, so uh, when I bridge this uh, to my network, first, uh, due to the pseudo bridging mode, you can only really use one host at a time. If you're using the IP protocol, it will make a list of the clients that are connected to the ports and kind of the idea is almost similar, uh, uh, similar as a NAT. It kind of makes a list of, uh, of which MAC address uh, connects to which IP and then when it sees that IP replying or, or an IP that's destined uh, to the host that's that's on this bridge it's going to uh, replace that its own mac address with this one uh with uh with whatever ip that's behind um these ports so if you're not using an ip protocol uh you are not going to be able to communicate with anybody else you can only connect to one host that's behind this uh, pseudo uh, pseudo bridge. That's what it's called. So the other problem I had was I could not get anything uh, higher than um, than around 60 to 80 megabits a second. Oh, even though this is a lab, that's not an adequate speed uh, because I may want to do some storage. Um, mm storage stuff and uh, a gigabit is fine so i had to run an ethernet cable from from the living room to this server which is working nicely uh and uh yeah network works okay uh utilizing full memory there's uh, no errors so we can go ahead and let this go memory utilization goes down uh, i'm gonna shut this virtual machine down at this point and uh well, what else is here Yeah, that was the utilization a second ago. It'll probably refresh and calm down a little bit. Yeah, there it goes. Yep. So everything is working perfectly. Uh, just to recap uh, the memory locations. Uh, put the bigger modules uh, before the smaller ones uh, and um, that should be no problem uh, everything else is pretty much running the same as it was before the memory upgrade maybe a couple of watts more it's it's draining uh, drawing rather a couple of more watts so so that's it for this video and uh, I hope this was useful and informative to somebody and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.